This video is a field craft video and it is engaging helicopters with small arms. Now some of this information you can find yourself. It was a common task decades ago. It's probably not in the current common task manuals. You might have to go to the 1980s, maybe early 90s. But the task you would look for then is engage hostile aircraft with small arms. Task number 441-091-1102. And I'll just read this. The conditions given an attack by hostile aircraft, individual weapons or crew served weapons which can be fired at the aircraft are available. So all you have is your small arms. You have your general purpose machine guns, you have your rifles, you have your squad automatic weapons. We do not have heavier weapons. We do not have any aircraft weapons. We are not engaging with anti-tank rockets or RPGs. Now, I, you, in this case, really you should be using your 30 caliber weapons, your 7.62. If you have anything heavier, the stuff that's really recommended for helicopters is going to be your 12.7 millimeters or 50 calibers and Russian 14.5 millimeter heavy machine guns. But the particular task we're looking at, we're just looking at small arms. Your rifles, your 30 caliber machine guns, and your squad automatic weapons. Now some of the areas that you can target on this. Obviously the cockpit, this is where the pilot and co-pilot are going to be located. You're going to have the troop and cargo area in back, but be advised, this is a big space and those troops inside are only going to occupy a small bit of it and they're probably going to be, you know, primarily down here. You figure you get more of a hit on the bottom half, but even then it's not guaranteed. You have your engine, which is located above the troop compartment and the back of the helicopter. I'm not talking the double rotor ones, I'm talking the single rotors. Now behind your troop compartment, you're going to have more of your engine, and that's also where the fuel is going to be. The fuel tanks are going to be there. It's not that uncommon that they're going to be self-sealing, but that self-sealing fuel tank can only take so many holes before it starts leaking. Now you also had the tail rotor on back, but I'll say this, tail rotor is a lucky shot only. You are not going to hit it if it's moving. I know all of us have probably seen Black Hawk Down where they hit it with the RPG. Hey, let's be realistic, the damn thing was hovering when it got hit. So the primary areas that you should be looking at when engaging a helicopter if you're able to, you're able to uh, get zoned in on a particular location good. The cockpit area, the engine, and the fuel tank location. Now, let's get into moving. We have a helicopter passing across our front, moving from our left to our right. Where do we aim? We aim in front of it, in line with it. And we aim approximately half a football field in front. So maybe one to one and a half chopper lengths, depending on the size of the helicopter. Now, what if it's approaching? It's coming directly at you. It's getting larger. You aim right over the top. I know this is a little high. You're supposed to aim right up above the front of the cockpit of the helicopter. That way the rounds are right in front of them. They're going to fly directly into them and you're going to stitch them. Um, I'll make this point quick as because this will work better on this. Locations of pilot and co-pilot. Now on Western helicopters, NATO, United States, European, 
The pilot is located on the right side of the helicopter, the co-pilot on the left. Both of them have identical controls. So if you hit one of them, the other one can take over. The only way you'd be able to take down a chopper by hitting the pilots is to hit both of them. <coughs> now on the Russian stuff, it looks like they reversed it. On the Russian MI-8, they put the pilot on the left side, co-pilot on the right side. And when I'm talking left and right, I'm, think, I'm talking about you are sitting in that cockpit looking out. It's not your left and right as you're looking at it. It's from sitting inside the chopper looking out. Now, landing and takeoff. The information for this, I actually got off a video of a poster captured from the Viet Cong. They were literally conducting a class on how to engage UH-1 Hueys right when the U.S. troops attacked and they um, put an end to the class. The few that got away, they left the posters behind that were using and some of the GIs walked off with them as war trophies. Now, if, you, if the chopper is coming in for a landing, when they do that, they typically come in a little bit with the tail coming down before the front end, typically. So what you're going to do, you're going to aim right in front of it, below it, and that chopper is going to come in right on the area that you're aiming. For taking off, you want to put it above and a little bit in front of the helicopter. Now when they take off, typically the cockpit and the troop area dips down, the tail rotor comes up and it lifts itself up. And it always comes out as an angle and it will go right through your shots. Now if the helicopter is hovering, it actually says in the manual, aim directly at the helicopter and just start pouring in the rounds at the specific location on the chopper you're trying to hit. Because once those rounds start impacting, it's not gonna stay in that position for very long. So if you got a 240, a PKM, that chopper's hovering, you know, it's right in front of you. They don't know you're there. You sight in. Sight in right on that engine compartment, fuel area, cockpit, whatever. And you just make sure the gun is uh, stabilized as much as possible. Maybe have someone hold the bipod on it. Sight in, pull down that trigger and hold. Just let it go full bore round after round into there. After a few rounds hit, it's going to start moving away but you want as many rounds impacting into that thing before it gets to that point so that maybe it's going to try taking off and then it's going to have that engine trouble or whatever's going to happen. Both those pilots are taken out. They slump forward on the sticks and that thing goes barreling right into the ground. Now, with helicopters, I really recommend 30 caliber and above. A helicopter, especially the current ones, can absorb a whole lot of 5.56 millimeter. So you want to hit it primarily with 7.62 and up. Now, if someone asks, what about a shotgun? Well, you're going to have to be really damn close. And if you're that close, you're probably going to get taken out by the door gunner. Let's be serious. And about the only damn thing that's probably going to work is going to be a slug round. You're not going to hit it with bird shot or buck shot unless a damn thing's sitting on the ground and you're a few meters away from it. But there you go. Some ideas, some tips, some information, and a place for you to look for engaging helicopters with small arms. Remember, 
We're engaging enemy helicopters here, not friendlies or a pissed off or a politician that pissed you off. We're targeting helicopters with enemy troops inside. Uh, I need to make this uh, note here. I got it written down. Keep in mind with gunships, attack helicopters, the crew compartments on those are typically armored. So in that case, you want to you want to target primarily that engine compartment. Try to take it out from there. I know some people will say shoot at the ordnance on the side. Maybe you can get it to explode. You're asking a lot. You're better off trying to concentrate your rounds right into those engines to take one or both out, depending on how many are on that chopper. Now, for all my engineer brothers and the Patriot and Militia movements, always remember SAONs.